After the Christopher Clemens trial, his fate is now in the hands of the jury. Closing arguments wrapping up just about an hour ago. Yeah, he's charged, of course, with the kidnapping and killing of six-year-old Isabel Sellis. Uh, late last year, he was convicted of the murder of 13-year-old Maribel Gonzalez. We want to take you through the events that led up to today. In 2012, Isabel Salas was at home when she was kidnapped through her bedroom window. For years, her parents didn't have any answers. Two years later, Maribel Gonzalez was kidnapped while walking home from a friend's house. Her body was found a few days later on Avra Valley Road. In 2017, almost five years after Isabel went missing, her remains were found in the same area. In 2018, Christopher Clements was indicted, and in November of last year, Clements was convicted in Maribel's murder. And tonight, the case of Isabel Salas is in the hands of the jury. The prosecutors and defense attorneys had their last chance to influence the jury when they made their closing arguments this afternoon. Nine on your side's Craig Smith was in court for all that action today. He's live at Superior Court now. Craig? They had a very full day. The jurors uh, really got the case just at the close of business today, just a couple of minutes before 5 o'clock. Uh, before that, the afternoon was filled with the closing arguments for both the prosecution and the defense. Let's give you an idea of what they went through right now. Now, this is the photo prosecutor Tracy Miller showed the jury through a large part of her closing statement. Isabel Sellis, six years old, was missing. Miller asked, how could the little girl have disappeared from her own home undetected? Then she told jurors prosecutors had solved the mystery, that Christopher Clements had kidnapped the girl and left her body in a remote part of the desert well north of Tucson. Miller told jurors of a locked folder on Clements' iPad full of photos of little girls in provocative poses. She also told about evidence of Clements' internet searches for information on trace evidence on bodies, body found in the desert, and the search phrase, Isabel Sellis, sexy. She also reminded jurors of cell phone traces that put Clements' phone near the Sellis' house and in and the day she disappeared in the desert where Clements later, later led investigators to sell his remains. He returned for a break on another case against him. Clements told FBI agents even though he knew the location, he had nothing to do with the little girl's death. When it was his turn to talk to the jury, defense attorney Eric Kessler challenged jurors to find one fact that would show Clements and only Clements could have kidnapped and killed the girl. He continues to point suspicion at Sergio Sellis, the girl's father, for seeming far too calm as he called 911. Kessler floated the idea that the family was having financial problems and that Sergio Sellis could have opened the lock gates surrounding the house and delivered Isabel Sellis to someone else. Kessler also questioned whether cell phone data from the day Isabel disappeared truly does connect Clements to where the girl's body was found. Well, now that the case is in the hands of the jury, they will come back most likely tomorrow morning, and they will pretty much set their own schedule on how they will handle deliberations, and we won't hear much more from them unless they have a question for, for the judge to answer or if they have actually have a verdict. Now, in the case of the Maribel Gonzalez um, uh, case, that murder, it took the, that jurors, that group of jurors, a little less than two days to come up with a guilty verdict in that particular case. Reporting live, Craig Smith, KGON 9, on your side. Craig, thank you so much. The murder and abduction of Isabel Solis is not a, only a tragedy for her family, but for the surrounding neighborhood as well. Nine on your side, Tina Giuliano went to the block to see how the area has changed. We're here in Isabel Celis' neighborhood, and this is actually her house where she once lived and then was abducted in 2012. The family has since moved out, but the neighbors tell me that curious visitors come down to see the house occasionally. I spent actually the whole day in this neighborhood talking with neighbors about how this area has changed over the last decade, and they've told me that there's been a lot of turnover. Many people have moved out, other people have moved in, and others that have stayed told me that they pretty much keep to themselves. They make sure that they talk to just a few neighbors that they know. But all the neighbors can agree. They hope that the family continues to heal and that this doesn't happen again. In Tucson's east side, Tina Giuliano, KGA 9 on your side. And as we await a verdict in this case, be sure to stay with us here on KGUN 9. We'll be bringing you the latest information on air, on our app, and online at KGUN9.com.